Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is going to be a video series project covering the conversion of a laser CNC machine to a plasma CNC machine or hopefully so. So I bought this machine about four or five years ago and it is a 1290 which stands for 1200 by 900 millimeters. That's the cutting area and it is a, an industrial size machine. We have exhaust ventilation, water cooling for the laser, etc. So why am I doing this? Well, a uh, couple years ago, maybe a year ago, my laser tube started acting up. I tried to troubleshoot it thinking maybe it was the power supply, but it is definitely the laser tube. And even a Chinese knockoff will run about 1000 a uh, good one, maybe closer to three or four thousand dollars. So, this will be to try and do a few things that I've always wanted to do, such as cutting metals and other things like that. Right now, this laser tube is only for 100 watts and can only cut things like acrylic and wood. So, let's jump into what I've done so far and what we're going to do. Okay, so jumping right in, this is the inlet to the power supply. Here it is. I've already undone the high voltage line, and up there you'll see I've already also undone the signal wires going into the system. The other three wires shown there are for the main power. This is the output power to the high voltage side of the laser tube. That's why it's heavily insulated, and the grounding wire. I'll go ahead and mention that you should be very careful when dealing with high voltage and I made sure that the system was discharged before messing with it and always the power is off. There you can see where the high voltage line and the ground line go to and yeah let's let's move on and see what we can do. So in order to figure out how we're going to trigger a laser or excuse me a plasma cutter instead of a laser tube we need to understand how this laser power supply is working so let's understand this digital pinout which seems to be the communication between the system this is just 5 volts this input looked up was a PWM signal between the 5 volts and the ground which is just to the left here indicated by the G so the N is going to be some power between the two this P stands for protection and just controls things that may signal a, a, a threat like a over temperature or maybe your water cooler is no longer working. Now we go on to the L. This is our triggering uh, pin. So if it pulls low to ground, it'll trigger the laser. And finally, H for high. If this is pulled high, then it will trigger the laser. So this is kind of what we'll be looking at in the next segment where I'm going to make sure that this is doing exactly what we think it's doing. Over here, we're not too concerned about this. This is just the mains. So these are the main power coming into the power supply. Over here, I know my system is using the pulling low because it had a wire connected to this connector. So that's definitely what I'm going to try to be using to trace back. Okay, so just using a multimeter with on the continuity setting, I found that this is the connector on the controller, which correlates to the digital pins on the power supply. Now, the green wire you're seeing there, I found is the L signal, or the low signal for triggering the power supply, and the red wire, oddly enough, is ground, which usually is black. But, in our case, we're interested in using the uh, green and red wires for our project and the yellow wire I'm discounting for now I actually forgot what it went to I believe it was the input or the inside um, for the pulse width modulated signal so let's jump on over and let's do some tests okay so the first test I wanted to do was load a random project and before we begin just checking that okay between the L and the ground that we have a high voltage 
and we're going to go ahead and hit start and now the machine begins performing a cutting function on and off um, and we see here that we're changing between a low voltage which is laser on and when you see it go high it's actually turning off so I verified this and this gave me pretty good confidence that okay that we can you know we can use this signal to try to control something for this project we're going to use an Arduino Nano we're going to connect 5 volts uh, the ground signals that we talked about and the low signal we discussed and we're going to use the USB to write just a basic code um, and then we're going to use D10 and ground to control a relay which is going to toggle on and off I'm thinking the trigger on the plasma cutter so we can use this to trigger on and off the plasma cutter and here's the finished product so here's the code it is extremely simple as I mentioned all I'm doing is setting my input pins so there's six my output pin 10 I'm setting a sensor value which normally sets high I'm just doing some basic thing I'll link this in the description if the sensor value is less than a certain amount turn it high otherwise keep it low so yeah let's move on so here I have connected up the Arduino with the code on it and we're going to verify that the relay does in fact toggle these two pins open and closed and we're actually we can hear the continuity checker as the laser were to turn on okay so for the plasma torch I'm using this titanium plasma 45 and I've already taken it apart and this is kind of a video after the fact but what you're looking for is uh, whenever this switch here is clicked that's you know just a uh, two wires coming into contact or not two wires but a contact occurring inside of here and I located the wires responsible for that contact here so in fact whenever you pull this trigger it's actually um, closing the gap between these two so in our case we can use the relay which we've uh, designed to close these two these two contacts together that will in fact do the same thing as pulling the trigger so every time the relay goes off it's the same thing as pulling the trigger now these are fairly easy to locate on your machine I was a little bit hesitant I opened it up um, using the multimeter just found the two wires coming through here this is where the the contacts come through so if I unscrew this <clears throat> take this out you'll see here there are multiple different contacts you can start here by probing these uh, with your with your multimeter and pressing the switch locating which ones are responsible for that and then going inside the unit you can find where those lead I I just opened up the wires put some solder on them added another lead coming out you obviously want to keep your plasma cutter in working order so you don't want to cut the wires you want to splice into them um, and and then just put some protective um, heat shrink tubing over it and run it out and just put a connector on it that way say you you can come hook this up to your machine unplug it and then you still have a good working working tool so it's, it's not reducing its function in any way alright let's head up and look at this this is um, a short-term fix just for testing in our next video we're going to be talking about designing something more permanent so that's coming shortly. So right now, this is going to be just a temporary tool holder because I really want to see this thing cut and just made out of a couple two by fours. 
Like I said, in the next video, we're going to remove this and we're going to design an SLS or later laser centered uh, part for uh, from a 3D printer. We'll design that in SolidWorks and we'll kind of walk through how to do all of that. Um, obviously, it's a little bit difficult because we have to copy the design of this or at least come up with something that it that can grab onto. But for now, for this test purpose, we're just going to place it here and we're gonna set the working height. I believe they recommend like a 16th of an inch from the nozzle to the working, the piece of work. And uh, yeah, let's see if it can work. All right, back, got the plasma cutter hooked up. We have air going to the back of the machine and we have the machine turned on the contactor hooked up and just in case I'm kind of pulling a lot of amps I'm going to turn the light off this is a very thin piece of metal but still I got it on the lowest setting it's still to pull 15 amps Okay, go ahead, turn on the oh, exhaust vent. And, uh, all right. Well, see how that turned out. Go ahead and off this thing. All right, so there's still a lot of work to be done. But nonetheless, uh, huh? You can see I've had a number of test cuts here. Uh, well, stay tuned for the next episode where we're going to refine this thing a bit. We have multiple things to take care of, so uh, this was just a test run.